behind us is where we want to put the garden. It's old um, um, hand-hewn timber frame. Want to address the mess behind us. Who knows, maybe that'll be a project in the future. And this is a pretty big space. It's jungle out there. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> I'm Brittany and I'm Chris and we are Indie Homestead. Welcome back to our channel. Today we're doing our homestead tour. We're doing it for a couple of reasons. One is to show you guys what we've got going on here. Another is to be able to look back and hopefully be like, wow, we did a lot. <laughs> so we are at the very front of our property right now. Um, it is very windy, but we wanted to show you this view. When we drove up, we were like, oh, uh, pretty much fell in love immediately. Immediately we were in love and we were like, we hope we love the inside of the house. We hope we love the rest of the property. Obviously you know how the rest goes because we did and we're here now. So when we first saw this property, it was what? It was end of March, early yep. April. It's still pretty cold. So we didn't see all the potential for growth, of course. There's been a lot of growth. <laughs> Weeds mostly. Weeds mostly. We have this long gravel driveway and leading up to it is our, they call it an Indiana eye house, right? Yeah, it's just called an eye house. I love it. It was named after where you would find them, which would be like the Midwest. Wikipedia it. So we are literally, what, 20 feet away from where we just were. Nice little walk. <laughs> A nice little, little stroll. Right behind us is where we want to put the garden. We mentioned that in our first video, um, and we kind of showed the space, but here it is. This is the sycamore tree that we talked about that we have to maybe get rid of. But this kind of space is where we want to put the garden. I measured it this morning and the space I'm gonna kind of work within right now is a 60 by 65 by 30 foot block, which I don't think I'll even start with that big. That sounds incredibly overwhelming. <laughs> I'm totally. <laughs> you wanna pop back in? He's fading away. Wait, I don't wanna do this alone. One of our next videos is actually going to be um, the entire thought process and what we're going to be doing as far as prep work this fall for the garden. Um, kind of our approach and hopefully getting some input from you guys who are seasoned gardeners. Maybe you'll be able to share some insight with us. We don't know what we're doing. We don't know what we're doing. My dad has a pretty big no-till garden that he's been working for a couple of years now and he's pretty pretty successful with that. I actually talked to your dad on the phone this morning about the garden, so he's helping any, me solidify any, plans. Any words of wisdom? Yeah, I'll share it with you in the next video. Oh, cool. <laughs> and next to the garden, opposite of the driveway, we're gonna have a little space reserved for the kids, nice and even, and a large space where they can run around and play. I thought that was pretty important. Yeah, the human yard. Yeah. Like half an acre for human play. Uh, you can see a place to run around without running and stuff. And stepping on poop. And stepping on poop. Unless it's your dogs. That's which isn't hard. ideal either. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> After seeing the house, the next thing that caught our eye was this big, beautiful red barn. It was built in when? I think it's the same age as the house. 1900. 1900. It's old, um, um, hand-hewn timber frame. And it has six stalls. It's full of stuff right now, but we obviously want to put it to work. We want it to have animals in the stalls. We want it to be a place for you to work and build things. You love to work with your hands and... Yeah, that's true. Yeah, and be creative. <laughs> I know. I do, I do like that. Uh -huh. And our long-term goal for this place is to renovate it. Yeah, um, turn the, either the, mostly the first floor into you know working stalls for the animals and then the second story we're kind of toying around with the idea of making that semi livable if we have family over or like turn it into like a classroom for the kids we know we love the barn it's got so much character we want to fix it up while still maintaining that old old school charm yeah. that it has i would also like to add although we are newbies at the homestead life we are not newbies at renovation life True. Yeah. We, our, our last house was as old as this house. It was built in 1900. Mm -hmm. And we got married, bought the house, and they're like, okay, now what? <laughs> let's redo the let's, whole thing. <laughs> let's redo it, start from scratch. So that's a little bit more, not as scary to think no. about. No, right? honestly, the homesteading is scarier than renovating. Yeah, right. Lives are at stake. <laughs> <laughs> are they? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and then before we move on to our other outdoor structures. Want to address the mess 
behind us. It's an enclosed area and the previous owners kept chickens and goats and a duck and... Yeah. Right now it's totally overtaken. And then there's some fencing in the back here that needs some help. It's like leaning and rotting because it's a low spot in our whole yard. Yeah, there's water. water yeah, up. this enclosure connects our pig barn with this big red barn. We ain't going in there. <laughs> Sorry. This is our milk barn. It's connected, not really connected, but it's right next to our big red barn. Yeah, we're on the other side of our big red barn now. It's a well insulated building that houses our well pump. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. <laughs> We've not spent the winter here yet, so we don't know whether or not um, our pump will freeze. I hope it doesn't. I hope it doesn't either. If we don't wake up someday to no water, we'll we, find we out. We've faced worse. Have we? Yeah, we totally have. Remember the mice of 2018? No, we're not talking about that. <laughs> That's embarrassing. We want to store firewood. We already are storing some firewood for our wood burning stove. And then we want to put a deep freezer in there for, for food. Yeah, <laughs> for food and stuff. So, <laughs> food mainly. <laughs> I don't know. What, what else would be in there? <laughs> I think one of the other things we've been interested in for a long time is solar energy and it just so happens to be that our big red barn has a very large amount of surface area that is southern facing yeah. that we think would be perfect if we ever decided to go down that solar energy route. Yeah, that would be really awesome. And then not just that one, but also um, the pink barn. Who knows, maybe that'll be a project in the future. <laughs> dollar dollar bills, y'all. Oh, no. <laughs> but you know what? Dream big, right? So yeah, aside from the thought of doing solar panels, we also have a functioning pig barn. We just need to add potentially like doors or something onto yeah, it. Yeah, we don't know what we uh, want to do with it. It's got three large carport style stalls mm -hmm. and we don't know if we want to make that our garage or we want to store some equipment in there or if we ever decide to get bigger animals like cows in the future, maybe that could be converted into uh, a cow barn or alpaca. Or alpaca. Why? Why alpaca? My mom's blanket is super soft and cuddly. <laughs> so right now we're standing over the dirt patch, which is our septic field. I think we kind of decided we want to plant at least some sort of cover crop. We haven't decided what the actual um, crop or layout is going to be, but we're going to plant a cover crop to kind of enrich the soil. So that'll be on the list over the next couple of weeks to sow some seed. Cool. Yeah. And this is a pretty big space. Um, I know we've talked about it quite a few times, like what are we going to do with it? We still don't know exactly what we're going to do with it, but we're on the right track. I'd love to toy around with the idea of either, you know, growing some wheat or some sort of grain that we can use and maybe supplement for the animals if we ever have to overwinter. So now we're in the pasture area right next to the septic field. You've been working hard on this. Pretty much nonstop since we bought the property. I've been chipping at it slowly. Previous owners used this as pasture, but over the last how many years? I, we don't know, a couple years. They kind of let Mother Nature take over and they it was kind of a cool idea. I kind of see where they were going with it. They they either had planted or let the maples in the back kind of take over. They had carved out these paths through it that it's kind of like a little nature trail. Really neat. That's one of the things that we have mentally kind of battled with. Is it worth like taking this essentially piece of nature out of our property and we ultimately decided yes because we want to raise animals that pasture. I felt guilty for a while um, but when I started to look around it wasn't a whole lot of like really beneficial native plant species it was mostly giant ragweed and mare's tail which are pretty noxious noxious weeds. Those had to go. Gotta go. <laughs> and behind us is this little Shelter structure, structure. Yeah. Um, potentially thinking about trying to make it movable. Right now it's anchored into the ground, but we thought maybe at some point we'd slap some skids on there or some wheels and maybe be able to tow it. Depends how heavy it is, it looks pretty solid. And our plan for this space... It's is, over an acre and a half. Yeah, over an acre and a half, um, is to divide this, this pasture area into three sections. So three pastures essentially, that way we can rotate the animals that we have and the front two thirds are doing better than the, the last third. <laughs> the, the last third. third is the forest. Yeah, the last third is the forest. We're in the back third. It's jungle out there. 
<laughs> Literally. I think I'm gonna be doing this. For the rest of your for life. For the rest of my life. And it still won't be done. So we got that chipper coming. Okay. Everything I cut down in there is gonna be, you know, reused and either put into where our where our garden is gonna go. Eventually, we'll let it sit and rot, as someone pointed out in the comments. Right, I'm sure we'll have other uses for it. Oh yeah. Back there is all silver maples, uh, dogwood, which are nice, sad to see them go. And the entire floor is poison ivy. Another thing we wanted to talk about was that we considered, because of all the manual labor Chris has had to do, we considered hiring out goats essentially to um, tackle some of these weeds. We found a couple but they're, they didn't come to our area. Right, they didn't come to our area and we thought about purchasing goats just for this purpose but we didn't want to overwinter them. So here we are back at square one. Do it by hand. What are you going to do? Cry. So that is the end of our homestead tour. We have to wrap this up because one, we're done showing things and two, we've got a crying baby inside. Oh, no. We know it's not. this isn't a lot as far as substance goes and things actually in motion with homesteading. We're very much in the planning stage and wanting to hit the ground running in the spring. Um, and it's overwhelming. Truly. Uh, there's a lot here. Um, there was a point in time where, you know, we've been here for a little bit, a couple months. You're like, is this really going to be enough space for everything we want to do? But after doing that little tour, you kind of get overwhelmed. Yeah. Like, where do we even start? We have so much and so much to do. We're so lucky. We are. We have so much to work with here, but it gets overwhelming really quickly. We have a lot to share coming up. We want to share a barn tour and our plans for that and what the inside's looking like. Spoiler alert, it's rough. <laughs> It is rough. Let's go thrusting. And then as mentioned earlier, we're going to share kind of our plan, like our official plan for laying the garden down this fall here in the next couple of weeks. We have all kinds of things to share and if you want to follow along on our journey, feel free to subscribe and follow us over on our Instagram. We'd love to have you. We'll see you next time. We'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Hi, I'm Brittany. And I'm Chris. <laughs> this was so awkward. So we got a bug on. Oh gosh. Protein. <laughs> Do I have boogers? I'm dark and you look like an angel right now. You're so bright. <laughs> Maybe get closer. <laughs> That's too intimate. Windy. The wind is blowing in the opposite direction of my part. <laughs> okay, style guy. After seeing the house, the next thing that obviously catch that catch it did it our it eyes. <laughs> And today's a very exciting day. We it's are my birthday. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> Send gifts. I don't know if it's my arms. I've got like That's the power perfect. stance going on. It's okay to be powerful. You show them what you're made of, baby. Whoa. Okay. I want to be able to see you. <laughs> so right now. Oh. So, <laughs> so right now. <laughs> I would love to be able to start going shirtless. Work on my tan.